Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Arch with Imran. I'm Imran. Hope you guys are having a great day and today we're going to be chatting about model making. Now, model making is often one of the first things people think of when you say you're studying architecture. But why do we make them? So this video is the first video in a mini series talking about the three types of model making we do in architecture and why. Now this video will be split into a number of different parts and I'll put the timestamps in the description so you can quickly jump between them. If you guys find this video helpful, please consider subscribing and hit that bell so you don't miss a new video. Now, let's get into it. Now, we've all seen those crazy detailed models that architects make, but what are their purpose? Firstly, we need to clarify, there are three main types of models that architects utilize. In this video, we'll be focusing on the first, that is concept models. Now, concept models are used in the early stages of the design process and are often shown off the least. You'll find that lecturers in architecture school will often encourage you to make loads of rough concept models or massing models because they're really crucial at the start of a project. Concept models help enforce a thought process. They can be simple or they can be complex and they can be made of a number of different materials, ranging from resin to concrete to card or even paper. Concept models allow us to investigate a number of different qualities regarding how our structure relates to its site. Some of these are how it interacts with the site, the quality of light, interior and exterior materiality, the form and massing, orientation, and many more. More importantly, if you're in architecture school, a number of your projects will stay on paper. So creating these models can give us a really good understanding of the materiality of the building, the spatial presence, and even things like where you would enter or exit the building. Okay, so now we're going to look at examples. Firstly, we're going to look at a few concept models I've made in this year and last year, and then we're going to look at other examples from the internet. And I'll talk about the reasons these are beneficial and how they could help inform your design process. Okay, the first model we're going to look at is a concept site massing model. Now, I did this in a small group last year, and the point of it was to understand the local massing and to give an idea of how built large and how tall the structure should be so that it fits well into its environment. As you can see here, we used wooden blocks to create the buildings, they're all done to scale, and we also laser cut the road onto a piece of wood and glued it all down. Secondly, here are some quick concept models I did out of cardboard for my recent nursery project. These helped me understand the form of the building and the layering and how many floors I wanted. It also helped me understand how the courtyard would fit into the space and how the light would hit the model. And finally, the last concept model we're going to be looking at that I made was one I did last week. This is for my current project, and my project I would like to have a large organically shaped canopy covering a number of buildings. To help me visualise this, I've used foam which allowed me to easily carve it away to create a natural and organic shape. Okay, we're now going to look at a number of examples off the internet that successfully show a number of different characteristics and talk about how they've achieved them and why they were beneficial. Now, this clear perspex model beautifully shows the route of transport throughout the building. You can see where the lift is on all the floors and you can see the staircases and how people move through the space. This is a great example of how to show circulation through concept models. This next image is a wooden massing model from London Metropolitan University. You can see how it really easily conveys the site and surrounding buildings. Also, you can see how the use of two different types of woods very clearly distinguishes between different types of buildings. This next model is really simple yet elegant. Using paper, it really clearly shows the light and shadow of the structure. However, the placement really easily suggests the footprint and form. This study model for Clifford Still Museum by Allied Works is made from leftover timber carved out. It really beautifully shows the form of the building and how the visitors will flow throughout the trees to reach the structure. Finally, this study model also from Allied Work of Dutchess County Residence Guest House shows very beautifully how your final structure can directly correspond to your concept model. Finally, we're going to chat about materials. Now, I understand loads of students don't have the budget to spend on loads of fancy materials, but this doesn't mean you can't produce high quality models using materials even like paper. Now, the first material we're going to talk about is concrete. Concrete is one of my personal favourites for concept models, especially massing models. It's relatively cheap and has a unique colour and materiality. Concrete's really versatile as you can change the ratios within it and it can be textured, dyed as well as coloured. Next we're going to look at wood. Now wood has a unique colour and based on the type of wood you choose you can achieve some really beautiful results. 
However, you'll most likely not want to use these in your concept models. As mentioned before, these are shown the least and you might want to save these materials for your final models. In university, I can assume that you'll most likely use MDF. Now, this is medium density fiberboard and it's made from loads of wood dust glued and compressed together. A great quality of wood is it can be laser cut, allowing you to get clean details and cut precise cuts, or you can even engrave it with details or text. As I said, I use this for the base of my site model and you can see that in this photo here. Now, the next thing I'm going to talk about is cork. Cork is often used for site topographies. It, when bought in sheets, it can easily be cut and stacked to create really beautiful topographies. But very few people know that it can also be bought in block form and carved and sculpted. Paper or card. Paper or card is another one of my favorite materials. It's really cheap, easy to use, and can look really clean if done well. Paper can be stacked to create a more rigid material, but it can also be laser cut to create more intricate and accurate designs. Paper has a really smooth finish and can have some really beautiful photos, especially if lit well. Foam. As you saw earlier, foam is something I've used a lot recently. It can easily be shaped and carved, allowing for organic curves and shapes. It can also be machine carved to create accurate site models that can be made very quickly and cheaply. Other. Now, there are also a number of different materials I've not mentioned, such as resin, 3D printing, or even metal. But that's because I believe the previous materials I've mentioned are the ones I think are best value for money and the ones they'll use the most within your early years at university. Now, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for. Have you guys ever used any of these materials in your concept models? And why do you make concept models? Leave your comments in the description and hopefully I'll catch you guys in another video. Take it easy.